I'll never forget it. He came into Tootsie's. He weighed about 110 pounds. Had that harmonica around his neck. Man, he's just always just real energetic, you know. He just always had it. And when he wasn't energetic, Uncle John would walk in, smack him on the back of the leg. Hey, boy, dance. Oh, Chris started dancing. Chris put on a good <coughs> show. Chris was one of those guys, he would take every shift that he could get. And when he wasn't doing shifts at Tootsie's, he was on Music Row and he was writing. I mean, he, he was in it to win. I remember he used to uh, sleep in his car like, like a bunch of us did, you know. Wow, what a memory. Now, of course, Chris is a country music superstar. There's another one we had that's on The Voice now, Dr. Donnie. I gotta talk to you about Dr. Donnie. Donnie Van Sleep. He came through Honky Tonk School. He's a uh, contestant on The Voice now. And he gave a shout out to Honky Tonk School, which I thought was freaking awesome. You know? I couldn't tell you how many times Donnie's sat here just like you guys, just wanting it bad. <clears throat> He's a chiropractor. Did that through the daytime and the nighttime. He'd be down here playing six to 10, 10 to close shifts, doing acoustic shifts, whatever it could take to get to that next level. And then he finally got on The Voice, and now, I, what, what team is he on? I should probably get my stuff straight. We could do it, but, but anyway, very proud of him, man. We'll probably bring him in here next Monday. I'll make him come in. Maybe have him, hey, that'd be a good idea. We should have him talk to these folks, right? Anita, don't you think that's cool? I'll call him and see what he's doing. Um, anyway, so it's, oh, he's with Reba. Wow, Reba is his coach. Wow, what an awesome coach that is. I hope he wins it. I really does. I really do. I mean, he's got an awesome voice. He's one of those guys, too, who just kept writing songs. How many people write songs in here? Y'all, everybody write songs? That's what's really going to get you to the next level is writing your own music. You know, what we do what we do is play familiar songs, you know, that everybody knows. If you have an original song, I don't, I don't, we don't ever say that you can't play original stuff, um, but if you do have an original song that you'd like to play in your set, run it past me and Anita, you know, send it to Uncle John too. Let uh, Uncle John's very, very intelligent when it comes to uh, picking songs. You know what I mean? He, he knows a hit when he hears it. So, uh, if you got original songs, send it to send it to me, send it to Anita, and we'll send it down to Uncle John and get his approval. You know, you can start playing it on stages. Nashville is totally different now. I love it because it's called Music City. It's not country and western music city. It's Music City. Which means it's, you know, it's everything. I mean, like me and my band on the main stage down here, shoot, we play everything from R&B to Tina Turner to Cher, to Van Halen, to Motley Crue, <laughs> to Randy Hauser, <laughs> just everything. Jason Aldean, we play everything. I mean, I love it because it's, you know, keeps us on our toes. Our, 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 our band might go from a big old journey piano solo to, to uh, Johnny Cash. Well, let me tell you something, Johnny Cash is still king in Nashville. That's true. You can kick off Folsom Prison Blues any time of the day or night you want to, and people will be right there with you. Another song, those, those old songs never die, you know, like, like uh, Country Roads Take Me Home. That's a song that I could grab my acoustic guitar on and go down, and I've done it too, band changes or whatever. That's a go-to song. That's what we call a go-to song. That's a song where you can grab your acoustic guitar and not lose anybody, and everybody's with you. Matter of fact, everybody knows the chorus. It don't matter how young they are, how old they are, everybody knows that chorus, that song. It's finding those big, it's finding those big tunes like that. I'm stealing this from Steve and Kelly Hunt. He's probably watching. I don't know if you are watching. Hey, Steve. 
<laughs> Stephen calls them grenades. That's the best analogy. Grenades. You take it, you throw it out there and they explode. That's what you're looking for. You know, like art bands. When you hit that stage, some people get it in their mind that, oh, you know, we're going to wait until people get in here. Some people get it, oh, we're going to chill out and wait until people get in here. The best time to put on, the, put your best foot forward is it don't matter if you're playing the tables and chairs, you come out swinging. Come out with the best stuff you got. You got people walking up and down these streets. Even if you're on this level, they can hear. These windows will be open. They can hear what you play. You're playing, you're playing bangers, they call them bangers, I guess, which is big old songs, you know. People gravitate where the party's at. If you're playing stuff they like, you can fill it up. Sometimes I'll, I'll look and through the crowd, you know, we'll have changeovers of people, you know, that, you know, because Nashville, people come and they want to experience a little bit of everything, right? They want to, they want to go bar hopping or whatever. That's cool. That's what I did when I first come to town, too. But if you come out with your best foot forward and you're swinging and you're hitting, you're hitting on all eight cylinders, like I like to call it, and you're playing the top songs and songs that's getting people in there really putting on a show, yeah, those people might, they might take off and they might go to these other bars, but guess what? They're going to walk in, they're going to look, and they're going to say, man, this band sucks. Let's go back to Kid Rock's. They walk into the other places. Man, this band, they don't put on a show like, like we do, you know? Let's go back to that other place. So, you'll see them walk through the door and wave at you. Hey, we're back. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're doing our job as entertainers. We're creating joy. That's what I was stealing from Stephen. We're creating joy. That That is our... that. That is our job, is to create joy. Now look, I know that life throws a lot of curveballs at you. I mean, I've been through divorces, I've been through oh, dog run off. I've been through all that stuff, right? You said dog run off? Dog run off, woman took off, all that stuff. But you know something? When you hit that stage, all that stuff goes away. It goes away. You got people that come in here from all over the world, man. I mean, it's world famous. It's not just the United States of America. It's Canada. It's Australia. Whew. Heck, I've even played with people from Japan that, that can't even understand what I'm saying about. That love what we do. It's an energy, man. It's like, blows my mind. It blows my mind. You never know what those people are going through in their lives. They come here to escape all that bullshit that they're going through in their everyday life, right? And they come here, we're almost like therapists, you know? It's music is therapy. It's like, we're almost like a psychiatrist kind of. You know, we got a big job if you think about it. I mean, it's a huge job. It really is. Um, we create joy. And uh, like I said, you never know what that person's going through, right? So we can't, we owe it to them. These people, they work 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week. They save up all year long. They don't get to experience it like we do, right? They save up all their money. That's why, in my mind, I never tell my band to do a $20 request. I don't want to play your song for 20 bucks. I never put, I never put a uh, price tag on my songs. I'll play that thing for a dollar. It don't matter. I play it for free sometimes. I, I, here's what always happens to me. like, Because I know when I moved here, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. right? There was a guy that was singing at Tootsie's down here. I don't know who he is, but I, don't, I can't remember who he was. But he was singing at Tootsie's, and I'll never forget it, man. I had 20 bucks in my pocket. Probably that, that might have been all the money I had. I don't even know. I didn't have very much. I had 400 bucks when I moved to town, but I had to eat and had to do all that stuff. And I had, and, and uh, I wanted to sing on that world famous stage so bad. I wanted it. I just wanted a shot. This was at nighttime. I'm standing back by the t-shirt counter and uh, 
This dude's walking around with a tip bucket, and I reach in my pocket, and I pulled out 20 bucks, and I said, can I sing a song? And he's like, yeah, man, just took the band to 20 bucks, you can sing a song. I said, man, I put 20 bucks in that tip jar, and he never let me sing a song. He never let me. He never pulled me up there. So I think he's up in Hendersonville cutting grass for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. There again, that was back in the old days. Now, we don't let people on our stages to sing songs. And I'll tell you why. Lawsuits. We don't want any more lawsuits. It's a different world now. Like, you know, if you get people on these stages and they're over-served or whatever and they fall off or whatever, they could, you know, get hurt. And I've seen that firsthand, you know. So we don't, we don't let people up to sing anymore. Like we did, but, uh, which is a good thing because man, it, it turned into being, it kind of turned into being uh, a, kind of a pain in the ass, really, to be honest with you. Because you have people in there that that, that kind of messes up the flow of your show, really. It really does. I mean, once you're on that wave and you're riding, you know. But here's what you can tell them: you can tell them people that want to sing with the band, say, hey. Tootsie's Orchid Lounge has a has an open mic audition. If you think you got what it takes, just come in to Tootsie's at two o'clock on Saturday. We've been having those auditions for 25 years, longer than that. Uncle John started this 25 years ago. We're still still doing it, right? So just send them down to Tootsie's. Give them my number. I don't care. I don't got my number. Give it to them. That's what it's about. We try to help everybody. You know, if you feel like they look like a stand-up person, and, you know, we don't want a bunch of, God bless them, but we don't want a bunch of uh, crazy people in there like we've had, you know. <laughs> Use your own judgment. Look like they're dressed nice, you know. It looks like they're they're professional. Send them, send them to the back room. Tootsie's on Saturday at 2 p.m., you know. Say, hey, you can sing there. That's the way to do it. I'm talking a lot, and I know that you got to get a gig, and I need to bring you up now. John Brazil, everybody. Come up here, John. John. <laughs> How you doing, John? Good. good to see you. John's probably one of the hardest working guys we got. How many kids you got? Five. He's got five kids. He's got a heck of a good wife, too. Let's him do what he loves to do. He supports those five kids playing music. That's what he does. That's his full-time job. And John is on these stages. I thought that I was a hard worker. I mean, I honestly did. I thought that I was. I would take every shift that Uncle John would give me, pretty much, if, I, if, if my voice was heavy. This guy don't even know what vocal rest is. He don't know. He has no idea what vocal rest is. <laughs> I guarantee you. There's been times he's been down here and done doubles and sometimes triples. I mean, and then uh, I just, I brag on him and, and he's, a, he's a very intelligent guy. So Uncle John gave him a kind of a new job. He helps run our studio. He helps book our studio. Uh, he's gonna talk to you a little bit about the studio. So give it up for John Bazeal. What's going on guys? We do have a uh, recording studio, it's at Uncle John's house, which is up White's Creek. It's about uh, 12 minutes out of north of downtown. And uh, we've got all kinds of gear from warm audio, we've got a Neve converter, all the, all the pro stuff. So what you get recording with us is an all analog signal chain, which is the main benefit. To, otherwise, we'd all just record at our houses, wouldn't we? So, uh, but what you also get, if you work with us guys, is um, you get to use the Honky Tonk School players. Who, you know, you mentioned Will Daddy's and Poison. You get uh, these guys that have been on a lot of pro stuff. So um, if you go in and record with your own band, you pay hourly. And if you'd like to use our players, it's a uh, package deal. And just this week, we added video. So um, if you want to shoot reels, if you'd like to shoot a like an intimate live acoustic in studio type thing, uh, we can do that as well now. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So anybody that wants to go to the studio, check out, uh, get get John's number. You can go up there and record all your music. Um, what huh? you want to do is, uh, here, here. Yeah, you do it. What you want to do is scan a code that uh, Morgan and Sarah right here have a code that you can scan, and we'll get all your info. Thanks. Yeah. John Mazzillo. Now go to work. <laughs> Don't forget, though, don't forget, have fun. That's what it's about. It's a business, and it's a job. You can always smile, and have fun. And that, that's the biggest thing you can do, really. I was at the, I was at the, uh, I was at the Grand Ole Opry one night. My old buddy Trent Tomlinson, I, you all know who Trent is? Anybody know who Trent is? Nobody? He was signed on Lyric Street, had a big record deal and stuff. He wrote a bunch of number one songs, in case you didn't know. In case you didn't know, baby. That's, yeah, that's Trent. Trent's bad to the bone, dude. Anyway, he uh, had his debut on the Grand Ole Opry, and I wasn't going to miss it for nothing. I was going to be there. So I got there, and I got lucky enough to get backstage and stuff. And there's this guy, his name's Mel McDaniel. Y'all remember Mel McDaniel? Stand up if you ever been there. Brian Clinton used to play drums for Mel McDaniel. Right back there. Yes, sir, bud. Yes, sir. Thank you, old Mel, for a long time. Anyway, old, old Mel McDaniel. Stand up. Louisiana Saturday night. Get down to fiddle. Get down to bow. All that stuff. I love that stuff, man. I love that kind of music. Anyway, old Mel was on the show that night. I used to smoke cigarettes. I quit smoking like a year and a half ago. I had to. Doctor told me if I wanted to sing, if I wanted to keep singing, I had to quit smoking. So I quit smoking. Quit drinking too. I ain't drank in 11 years. Wow. I don't do nothing but drink coffee. Anyway. So Trent does his thing. I'll, or no. Yeah, Trent does his thing. I walk backstage. Mel McDaniel uh, just got off stage too, and he was back there by the trash cans outside, and he was smoking a cigarette. And old Mel, on his later days, uh, um, before he passed away, he was walking with a cane. He had that. Remember that? He had that cane that he was walking with. And I walked up to Mel, and I said, "Man, I said you don't realize how much power you have in that cane." He said, what are you talking about, son? I said, well, when you walked out on that stage with Grand Ole Opry, and you took that cane up, and you went like this, you got a stand ovation from that whole place. He's like, man, I never thought about it like that. I said, yeah, I said that. There's a lot of power in that cane. I said, I know this is cliche. I know everybody probably asks you this, but if you had any advice for a young artist in town that's wanting to do this, what would it be? And he said, Hmm. I said, just make them like this, Scott. Just make them like you. And a light bulb went off above my head, and I'm thinking, that's really all you gotta do. Just make them like you. And then he said, always hire people better than you, and you'll have a job. Boy, that's what I've done. I've hired people. Everybody in my band sings better than I do. It's true. They all sing better than I do. Maybe they can't out entertain me though, because I'm not <laughs> entertained. Michael John taught me how to do that. Steve Smith taught me how to do that. But um, uh, yeah, so I've always kept just top-notch players. Like John Mazzell was talking before, Will Dowdy, my keyboard player, he works for us, and then he also plays for the rock band Poison too. You know, so he's out on tour with those guys. Molly Crew and Def Leppard and Joan Jett and that whole tour, you know. So you always hire people that that, that are that are better than you. And you always have a good, you always have a job. That's what I've. That's one thing that Mel taught me, and I've kept that forever. I've kept that in my mind, and that, that's probably the best advice that I've ever got was from them. I'm talking a lot today. I'm gonna bring Anita Hill up. Everybody get your hands together for Anita. <laughs> Anita is my best friend. She's my psychiatrist. We're on the phone seven days a week. 
hopefully uh, help Uncle John with the booking and just just happy to be here. I am happy to be here. Oh, you look nice today. You look nice today. Anita Hill. Some new faces as well. So he has some really good points. Um, and that's what makes this organization different than any other place down here. There are a lot of places to play, but it's teaching you how to entertain. Because when you can entertain and make that connection, that's when you're gonna make fans that follow you for life, that are really that really buy into what you're doing. So that's so important. And I love everything you said was awesome. I also love talking about making people like you because that's also important. And there's so many different angles on that, but smiling, like you said, is great. Eye contact um, is such a big deal. People, because people, we all, from every different walk of life, every different country, we, we just want to be seen and known. I, I believe that's true. Whether we admit it or not, we just want to be seen. So I think that's a really powerful tool to make that connection. Um, it just is. So dress up, look like you're invested in yourself and you believe in yourself, and people will believe in you and they'll, they'll buy into you. Hi, Macy. Hi. I love pe seeing people come in because, you know, we can kind of look at them and watch them and say, okay, I wonder how far they're going to go or how well they're going to do. And it's so intriguing, and I'm so thrilled to see you so integrated in such a part. I just hear nothing but great things about you and that you're such a hard worker and that you're just awesome. I just want you to know that. Wow. Yeah, 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 I love that. I love seeing you. So perseverance. I think it's a big part of what we do as well because every day is not the same. We're gonna feel discouraged some days and that's we learned from that too. Um, we're not always gonna feel it, but you have to, I don't like to think anything, but fake it till you make it, put on that smile and pretty soon you're gonna be feeling feeling that and your your energy is going to be contagious and that's what we want that's what we do right we look he's he, Scott said we want to spread joy so he has a masterful way of making people feel like they're part of his show just silly little things it doesn't even have to be anything I don't even think you think it out ahead of time do you or do you have your go-to things I just read my crowd I just I just look out, I, I see what uh, what age they are, you know, and then I, that, that's how I do it. You know, like, there'll be times that we'll be coming off of a big Motley Crue song or something huge, you know, uh, and I'll pick out somebody in the audience like that man right there and I'll say, give it up for him, he just got out of jail this morning. You know what I mean? Like that, and then I'll kick off Folsom. How many people spend a jail in here? You know, like that. And then, I, then I'll kick off Folsom Prison Blues, you know. Little things like that. Yes, that's what sets them apart, honestly. And the Honky Tonk High Five, that's another thing I love that he does. Because shaking hands, high-fiving, that boosts, boosts your oxytocin. Does anybody know what oxytocin is? Yes. Who wants to tell me? It's the chemical in your body that makes you happy. Yes. That chemical that makes you happy. Natural drug. That creates natural drug starts that creates the connection. So that's that's so important. Um, <laughs> okay, so the being likable thing, it's really I don't think it's really that hard. I don't know. Um, so one might think they did a study where they went into high schools all over, different parts of the world, all different high schools, and they did a study on the most popular kids. And I would think, like if I were using my you know, deductive reasoning. They might be the best looking, or they might be the smartest, or the most talented, or whatnot. What does anybody want to just throw out a couple things that you think it might be? The most popular kids, the common trait of the most popular kids. Best personality. Personality. Mm -hmm. Genuine. Genuine. Mm -hmm. That plays into like the big answer. Confidence. Confidence. Okay. Kindness, that's awesome. Okay, so what they found is they had all the popular kids write down the number of people that they liked in that school. And the common denominator in the most popular kids all over the world was that they liked the most people. Which for me is totally unsuspecting, right? But there's so much power in 
looking at somebody just to see what can I like about this person? How can I like this person more? Like it's you're, you're digging for gold kind of. So I, I really love that and I thought that was encouraging. Just the, the power of liking people and making that connection. So that kind of ties into what you were yep. saying about being likable. Yep. That's all I got. Ah. <laughs> There was this guy from Canada. Uh, it's all about building friends. And I get this from everything that I say on stage, I pretty much stole from somebody. We'll just go to reality, like Uncle John says. Go to reality. Uh, Tyler Farr, whenever I was helping him, I said, man, I said, who is your three favorite people? Famous people. What, what, who's your three famous people that you like? And uh, he said, well, he said, I like George Jones. And I said, okay. I said, I love George Jones too. You know, that's a traditional son. He said, I love Hank Jr. I said, well, everybody loves Hank Jr. I love Hank Jr. because he's the, you know, outlaw, rowdy songwriter guy, right? And he said, the third person I like is Michael Waldell. I said, I don't know who Michael Waldell is. He said, he's a famous hunter. He's a hunter. I told Tyler, I said, you take a piece of George, you take a piece of Hank, and you take a piece of Michael Waldell, and you put all that together, and that's who you are. You gotta think about it. If you listen to some of his stuff, he's got that attitude of Hank Jr. when it comes through. Redneck crazy, he's got all kinds of attitude in it, right? And then he'll grab a ballad and sing those smooth notes like George did. Now the Michael Waldell thing, he was out on tour with Jason Aldean, and I, I told him about this later. I went on Tyler's tour bus a couple times, you know, whatever, and his, his tour bus kind of looked like our old apartment, you know. There's coal cans and shit <laughs> back there, dirty laundry, so front lounge is clean, but the back room kind of looked like our old apartment. <laughs> He ain't changed a bit, right? <laughs> so I walk back there in the back. So knowing Tyler, he probably was getting ready to go out on, on the stage with all Dean and he, his clothes probably wasn't clean or whatever. And he probably just, he grabbed a pair of old camouflage pants. Michael Waldell wears camouflage pants, right? Walks out with camo on the stage. And I think that's what saved his career. Started wearing camouflage on stage. And that right there gave him his image, you know. And I and I saw him on uh, several music award shows, and they made him a camouflage coat that he come out and wore that was badass, you know. So he took three of those people and put together. So that's what I'm telling y'all. You get three people that you really, really love. You know, you take a piece of this one, take a piece of this one, take a piece of that one, put them together. Watch all that YouTube stuff. It's all available now. You know, like me, I'm a huge Sammy Hagar fan. I love Sammy Hagar. Um, there's a thing that I say, I'll, I'll say, hey, where's all the happy people at in the audience, right? Where's all the happy people? I stole that from Sammy Hagar. You know, you take pieces, watch all these live concerts. Like my band, like I have them, I don't really have them learn stuff like the record. I have them learn it like the concert because we're live, you know. Concert stuff's a little different, right? It's got more, to me it has more feel, you know, and I, and I love how they, like the Kid Rock concert, like if you watch Kid Rock in 1999 at Woodstock, oh shit. Talk about entertainer, I ain't saying it because of work for him, but Kid Rock's one of the best entertainers I've ever seen in my life. Man, he is smart too. One night, me and Kid Rock were hanging out in the VIP section up here, and we had our band, the Mance Brothers, and they were playing. Kid looks at me, and he's like, what's this shit? Mance Brothers go in the ball with the ball, right? Ball with the ball, bang, bang. And the crowd's going crazy, you know, because they're thinking maybe Bobby might get up and sing, you know? And he's up here, and Bobby's looking at me, and he's leaned over that rail like his Halfway through the song, the Mans Brothers went from ball with the ball to, I could be home with you tonight, that old Merle Haggard song, right? And they played like a verse and a chorus of that, and then they went right back into ball with the ball. 
And I was like, holy shit. Running those songs together like that. Kid Rock come up with that, you know? Running those songs together like that, creating that show and doing stuff that people wouldn't, you know, who would ever thought that you would hear a Merle Haggard song in the middle of a Kid Rock song, you know? And I'm like, wow. That's what Bobby said, Kid Rock said down there. He's like, you know, people need to be original. I hang on every word that those guys say. Like Steve Smith, Uncle John, Kid Rock, all those. I hang on every word that they say because they've been there and done that. And I'm here to learn, just like you. I never stop learning. Kid Rock never stops learning. Steve Smith never stopped. Uncle John never stopped. You never stop learning. You know, we're all learning. We're all striving to be better, striving to be better at what we do, right? So the moment that you think you know it all, that's whenever you probably ought to go to Walmart and check out a job down there or something. Always show up on time. Show up on time. I had to let, uh, we had to let one of our, couple of our people go last week that had been with this company for over 20 years. They just couldn't show up on time. And I had, and we got so many new people coming in that are willing to show up on time and willing to do what it takes. So we had to let them go. Me and Uncle John talked about it. And uh, so make sure you show up on time. Always show up on time. That's a big thing, huge thing. Changing stages out quick, like a NASCAR pit crew. We change them out. If you're, if you're playing a gig, grab your acoustic. Play acoustic till the next band gets there. Don't quit until you see the next band get there. Then once the, once the musicians get there, Grab your acoustic, play some acoustic. Keep that crowd going. You know, change out quick on every stage. That's what we do. That's what we've done. That's what we've done for 20 years. You know, that's what I still do. I'll, uh, my band, you know, we get done at like 5.45. I'll grab that acoustic and I'll play an extra 15 minutes. Well, guess what happens whenever you play an extra 15 minutes? Sometimes I'll have my band play until six and then it, you know or whatever if they're stuck in traffic if the other band's stuck in traffic and they send me a text hey man i'm stuck in traffic i can't get down there i'll look at my guys and i'll say roll on until i tell you to stop but that extra 15 minutes like if i'm up there playing acoustic i make a lot of money in that extra 15 minutes there's people coming up tipping me throwing money on stage madison's still out there with the tip jar running the tip jar you know we make we make money even though the band's tearing down. And no, I don't keep that money. I split that money with my boys. You know, we take care of our band guys, right? We take care of our team. That's what we're all in it together. That's what we're in it for. We're in it together. Uh, <clears throat> so show up on time. Make sure that you uh, learn the songs properly. The other night I had a... I had a band that had come through Honky Tonk School and I thought we'd try them. And the band was awesome. Uh, the singer didn't know the lyrics yet. So we had to help him <laughs> a little bit. But he's learning the lyrics to the songs now, which is good. I kind of put the cart before the horse on that one. But anyway, uh, let's see here. Ch -ch -ch. Morgan Frazier, come here, real quick, come here. And Sarah May, and we're gonna make it quick, and then we're gonna start playing music. Morgan Frazier's been with Uncle John since she was 15 years old. Now, I normally, I, I always say this, you singers, musicians, don't date anybody that you're working with, okay? Don't do it. Don't date any bartenders. <laughs> Stay away from them. But this is kind of the exception to the rule. Her and her husband have been married for how long? Uh, seven years. Seven years, and they played together on the circuit. <laughs> they had a band together. But now she she's, has a beautiful daughter, and now she's getting ready to have a son. <laughs> that 
network that was exception to rule. Me, I married a Tootsie's bartender and wound up in divorce court. Okay? So I'm telling you from experience. Don't date people that you work with. Right? Not unless Uncle John approves it. <laughs> I feel like a stand-up comedian. <sighs> anyway, Morgan, the reason why I brought her up here, uh, you know, she comes down here when she can, and I'm glad to see her today. But Morgan was signed to Curve Records. She did all that stuff, wrote it on Music Row. She knows all about the publishing world. She knows all about what's going on in Nashville. So give a big round of applause for Morgan Fraser. Yeah. yeah, so um, I've been working for Tootsies for going on 17 years now um, for the whole circuit. And uh, I just learned a lot um, being able to play in these bars that I actually took on the road with me when I did big shows opening up for Country Thunders and major artists and stuff. And that really set me apart from the people that were really green just getting into the music business and writing songs like that. And shit, I mean, if you can't find something to write about <laughs> from being in these bars and seeing what you see go on, yeah. um, dynamics between the bands and stuff like that, use that. You know, use your experiences and what you see around you. Write about what you know is what they say. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's always just so much to learn down here and um, big thing is just like what Scott was saying earlier, be authentic to who you are. I think that that really comes across um, on stage more than anything. Think about things that make you who you are and put them on the stage. If you're a talker, if you're, you know, and you want to connect with people that way, do that. Um, it's, I just think that it's really important to uh, make that connection with the crowd. And one thing that I've talked about a week ago or two is if you're in a room and you see, I feel like dynamics and energy change a room. So if you see, uh, you walk in, you automatically see a bachelorette party that is having a darn good time and they're, they're singing along to the, the house music and there's not even a band set up yet. Connect with those girls and be like, hey, where are you guys from? It's tough being a female front artist too. I mean, I don't know how many times I walked on the stage and these girls are like, who the hell is this? You know, they just have an attitude right out of the gate. Those are the people I go, hey, I'm Morgan, where are you guys from? You made that connection, you're gonna keep those people and those people can change that room because they're there to party, they're there to have a good time and they're gonna make everyone else have a good time. So those are just things that I've learned over the years um, of being down here and playing with a live band for so long. So that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> right. Always remember too, uh, if anybody comes in and wants to book your band, Give them, give them my information. Uh, we can get you more money than you can get yourself. I've been trained by the best. Uncle John, uh, this guy come into Tootsie's one night. He had a card and he said, I want to book you for this event. You know, he's kind of overserved or whatever. But I always took those cards and stuff and I'd always send them to Uncle John. Uncle John is my, is my booking agent, right? still today. Uh, he got me 6,000 bucks to walk across the street from Tootsie's, go over to, the, go over to uh, Bridgestone Arena and, and play a gig. Six grand, just to walk across the street. You deserve to be paid. I mean, think about all the hours and stuff that you've put in, learning the drums, learning the bass, learning all the stuff in your, in your rooms at home, right? Listen to those records over and over and over. Getting the right time, getting the right beat, getting the right lyrics. Get the, you got a lot of work involved in this. You know, you don't realize it because it's something you love to do. And you don't really look at the clock and say, oh, I got this many hours, I gotta quit now. No, that ain't how music works. Music, music is what we do, it's who we are. Right? So we don't put a time frame on it, we just freaking get it done. That's, that's what you do, right? But you've got a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, all that stuff into learning this stuff. So we just, we, you deserve to be paid. If you're going out of town, you deserve to make big money, you know? 
Think about it like this. If you got a guy that says, oh, well, I'll pay you 1500 to go to Kentucky and play a show. Okay. Well, you got to figure your gas. you got to figure all that stuff in it, right? So you get up to Kentucky, you've already lost money here from your gigs, right? And that, and getting all that stuff prepared up there, $1,500 sounds like a lot of money, right? But once you put travel expenses in it, you put food and you put all that stuff in it, and you got sound and you got all this stuff, you've actually lost money. You've lost money. Because you probably missed at least one gig, maybe two gigs down here, where you would have made a thousand bucks or the fifteen hundred or whatever. So to go to Kentucky, you know, you need to make about ten grand. Really. To get you guys paid, to get you paid, to get it, you know, get all that. If you're going farther, you know, like uh, we got an event coming up pretty soon that um, we got one of our bands $25,000 to go to Ohio and play one gig for two hours and come back. You deserve to be paid. It's true. You deserve to be paid. And, it, and you know, it used to be like as an artist or a musician or whatever, you're trying to book your band and trying to do all that stuff. I always felt like if I'm trying to book myself that I was always like bragging or whatever, you know what I mean? I was never, but I can talk for you guys. Uncle John talks for me. He's taught me how to do this stuff, you know? Still teaching me how to do this stuff, I should say that. But anytime you get any uh, business cards, people want to book you out of town, what I'll do, I'll take that business card, I'll call Uncle John up on the phone, I'll say, hey, this, this customer uh, wants a rock band and wherever, and the first thing he'll say is, okay, what's it for? How many people's gonna be there? Sound, and then uh, get contracts made up so you're not screwed, you know, because we got everything is straight up, and it's a process, you know, we go through and we get, to, we get all the uh, contracts and everything drawn up, and you get half your money up front, right? So you'll get a check before you even leave town, because you need travel money, right? So you get that, and then we make sure that the uh, rooms are provided, you know, flights, if you're flying, or if, you're, if it's close enough that you can drive, and make sure you get gas money and stuff all in there. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. It took me many years to understand how that process worked, right? And it was just watching Uncle John and watching what he did in certain situations, and this is how he handles this, and this is how he handles that. And I, was one of those guys that always wrote notes down. I mean, I still got a ton of notes in my house that I've written down over the years. So, you know, we can get you more money than you can get yourself. We can. And, uh, like I said earlier, you know, to go out of town, you deserve to be paid for it. It's just the way it is. Okay, uh, so with that being said, we're going to talk about TikTok, and then we're going to make some music, because that's what we're here for, right? Making music. Sarah May does our TikTok, she does her social media stuff, she got the sparkling jacket on. <laughs> She's TikToking today. Are you a TikToker? Yeah, I started wearing this sparkly jacket again and it made a difference, so y'all invest in your clothing. <laughs> Every time I wear this, something magical happens, I'm really good. And yeah, I was born in the, never mind, I'm not going to, okay, I was born in what's the same, okay, never mind. okay, y'all, TikTok, who doesn't have TikTok? Doesn't? Doesn't. Get a TikTok, until they ban it, if they ban it. But y'all, that's the best way to build your following right now, it's bigger than Spotify, it's bigger than Instagram, but post on Instagram too. It's digital storytelling, it's smiling. It's everything that you learn on the stage, but in front of the camera. So make sure that you get them immediately, you engage them immediately with your content. Make it good. Be like, hey y'all, tell them about yourself, because they have no clue who you are when you get on that video. Be like, hey, I'm a new artist, I'm in Nashville. People want to hear Nashville. Tell them stuff about yourself, you know, be warm. What I noticed about Scott, Anita, you know, Morgan, all these people, they're so warm. They're so warm and welcoming. 
And that's part of it. You want to make people feel more, like you're part of theirs. They're, you're inviting them into your world. So when you're making content, do you know, get ready with these, show them your equipment, show them your life, show them who you are. Uh, the way that Honky Talk School can help you is by the Instagram stories. Um, tag our page and we'll repost you and we can share audience, you know, make a collaboratory post because we will post it if it's good, you know, and uh, then you can, I mean, we have an audience that's growing so fast, it's crazy, and Pierre is helping so much. Give it up for Pierre. Oh my God, you're helping so much. And he's doing the thing that is so important right now, which is going live, y'all. Promote your video on TikTok so you can get to a thousand, so you can just go ahead and start going live. Because once you go live, it's it's easy, you know? You'll be going live on your shows, go live at home, go live walking around with your friends. Like, that's the biggest thing. Be with your friends, you know? Post singing together, make it a thing, you know? Make everything larger than life, because it is. We're all here in this town and like, we're the bravest people out there because we moved from wherever we came from and decided to take a risk and do this. And it's paid off for me and it's going to pay off for y'all. So, okay. Awesome. I'll give, you, I'll give you a real quick TikTok story and then uh, I can't hear you, honey. I'm... What'd she say? Stand up. I'll scan the QR code back there for y'all go up on stage. Uh, anyway, I'll share a brief TikTok story, then we're going to make some music. Z Pierre is bad to the bone. He's down here all the time, Thursday through Sunday, Sunday and Monday mornings with us, too. Yes. Thank you, Z Pierre. Happy to be here. Thank you, bro. Happy to be here. ZPR509 yeah, is what you can check him out on YouTube and see what all the bands are doing down here. And that's what I do. I lay in bed and I got a big flat screen TV at the foot of my bed and I watch ZPR. <laughs> I do, man. I do whenever I'm not down here, man. I do. I love it. It's one of my favorite TV okay. shows. Can I say something? Come here, dude. Okay. Come on, man. ZPR. I'll make it quick. Um, I want to say, Scott, thank you so much. I'm happy to be with Uncle Tom School. Thank you to Uncle John. Everybody here, if you're here, he sees something in you. If you guys here, Uncle John sees something in you. Scott, Uncle John, this is something in me. Some people today, when they see me like, Pierre, you know, this is crazy. You, you're weird. But they believe in me. They, they see the potential. It's 2024. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Live. Is. If you're not using it, Abby, I watch you all the time. You know, you popular by the way. <laughs> no, if you're not on social media, you are beyond. You are in dinosaur years. Scott, thank you for like they saw what I was doing. They see the potential, and it's crazy. Some people, like maybe two or three girls down here, they be like, no, here you can't come here. You know, they don't see what you guys see. And I'm like, okay, you're lost. <laughs> you know, but I just want to say thank you, Scott. I love you. Oh, love you too. Hey, hang on just a second, though. I got to clear something up. Okay. The reason why you're here is Uncle John. Okay. Uncle John is what he called me up. And he said, Scott, he said, man, come on, go to reality, buddy. He's like, that boy's down there filming these bands. He's like, you need to help with honky tonk school. He's got this, you know, and that's why you're here. It's because Uncle I'm John Taylor. Thank you. I'm, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Uncle John, thank you so much. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, oh, TikTok story, then we're done. Then we're going to play some music. Uh, so Sarah May, she kept telling me over and over and over, TikTok, 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 uh, uh, whatever. And I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm an old school guy, you know. And, and I, I'm like, man, I got Facebook, you know. I got Instagram, I got all that stuff. This is just one more thing. It's just, you know, I don't know my phone. So, I ended up, she talked me into it. I'm like, okay, I'll try this TikTok thing. So I downloaded it on my phone. The first day I downloaded it, I went in to play my gig at uh, Kid Rocks down here on the main stage, right? So I'm down here with my band. This lady, she comes in, and you can tell she was just a different person. She's my kind of person, my kind of people. You know what I mean? 
she come in and she's dancing and all this shit. And she grabbed her Marlboro altar lights and she set them up on stage with her lighter and pointed at me like this. And she's dancing like, and I'm like, so I grab my phone and I don't know if it's a 15 second, 20 second clip, whatever. I go boom and I hit that thing and I recorded her dancing, right? That's all I did, just recorded her. I didn't know how to tag anybody. I didn't know anything about that. I just did that, hit boom, and posted it on there. It was like the first video I ever, it was the first video I did. Well, anyway, I set my phone behind me because I never have a phone on stage. I don't like phones on stage myself, but I like to know the lyrics and all that stuff. My musicians is a different story. They got phones because they got stuff they got to do. Me, as an entertainer, I don't have a phone on my stage. Um, so I set my phone down, and by the time I got done with the gig, I had a half a million views. And I thought, this is crazy. Half a million, 500,000 views on this thing. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, I'm like, this can't be right. So I go home, get up the next day, I have 1.5 million. I'm like, holy shit, this thing's going crazy. So I just let it back, whatever. I, I, I was trying to read some of the comments, but, you know, didn't really know anything about TikTok. NAS, uh, Tootsie's has a NASCAR. You've all seen the Tootsie's NASCAR, right? So we were doing a thing at Nashville Motor Speedway, and Tootsie's had a tent out there. We had some acoustic acts out there. Me and my son went out. We were having a good time. My phone rings, and it's Uncle John. He's down in Florida. He called me up, and, you know, it's loud trying to hear the NASCARs and stuff going around on the moon and everything, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, Uncle John said, he said, that, that lady that you took a video of, she got a hold of me. And I'm like, holy sh! how in the hell did she get a hold of you? He said, uh, well, he said, you better call her. He said, I got her number. He said, but she's, she's uh, wanting to talk to you about that video that you shot, you know, so call her. I was like, yes, sir. So I walked into this quiet area and I got the phone out and called that lady. And uh, I said, my name's Scott Collier. I work for John Taylor at Honky Tonk School, blah, blah, blah. Went through the whole thing. She's like, Honey, she said, look, she said, we didn't realize this video was going to go viral. At this time, I'd had 3 million views on it, right? This time, 3 million people, it seems. She said, we didn't realize that this video was going to go viral. She said, but there's a lot of people making bad comments in here. And she said, I have a 15-year-old son that kids at school in his hometown are making fun of him, making fun of me, and making fun of him, too. Can you delete the bad comments? Well, there was thousands of comments on there, thousands. And I read some of them, people were calling their trailer swift, all this kind of crazy stuff, you know, bad comments. So I, I said, no, I said, what I'll do, I'll just delete the video. So I ended up deleting the video, but I got a ton of followers off of it. I mean, a ton of likes, a ton of followers, all this stuff. So. That little story that I'm telling you, those people that are on there, they're real. It's not some made up stuff. Those are real people, real followers. TikTok is for real. I hope that they keep it going because it's awesome. Okay, I've talked a lot this morning. Now it's time to make some music. Are y'all ready to make some music? Y'all ready to play some good songs? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna bring up, that's your rig, right? Come on up. Lead guitar players, new lead guitar players. Who plays lead guitar? Thank you, Elizabeth. Lead, you got your guitar, you got your amp, you got everything. Who brought? You got an amp, set her up. Set your stuff up, you'll play first, and then we're gonna use your amp, okay, is that cool? Set it up right there, bass guitar players. Come on, wait, have you played before? No, you're fine, man. You, you can, you come can up here, good, man. come up here, bass guitar player. Did you guys like my right, speech? Now we need to sit, we're, we're building the band as we speak. Build the band. Shout out to Uncle Tom School, guys. Follow us everywhere. Uh, if you have any message, you, um, young lady, you can right contact there. us at Uncle Tom School. If you, don't, if you don't have a social media, but you should have a social media, guys. Come on. Quiz, I say you did. Come oh, my. Up right here. 
Scott, quit stop watching. <laughs> Y'all right, could just take a few minutes to talk to each other and get to know each other and get out there and sign that QR code. Everybody go back and see Morgan and uh, Clint. Everybody go back and see Morgan scan the QR code. <laughs> Yo, Krista, what up, Krista? I know you always make fun of me, Krista. That's cool, but I love you. Shout out to Krista Dudley. Make sure y'all follow everywhere. Um, make sure y'all follow Lela's. They will stress your uh, shout out to Lela's. Um, Uncle Tom. Wow. Check on two. Uh, again, guys, every Saturday, open mic audition. Guys, you need to be in this room. This is where you need to be. Uh, they don't, Uncle Tone School is the only one doing this. Take advantage of it. Come here, get everybody. Uh, listen, come here, get everybody number. Because you got guitar player, you got drummer, you got singer, you got... Doesn't matter. Even if you come here once, okay. I'm gonna help you out here. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out. <laughs> okay. I I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. Come here, get everybody number, guys. Always get Scott number. You know, get everybody number, guys. Sir, sir, <laughs> say something to the people. Yeah, she's done very good. She's done very yeah. good. And she did it from being on Broadway. She posted videos of her on Broadway. Yeah. So, like, and Abby, hey. Yeah, Abby, come say something to the people, Abby. Make you sure y'all follow. Make sure y'all follow, Abby. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abby K. I play bass, um, and I'm a bad bitch. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and tell everybody your TikTok. They probably already know it. Follow her on uh, Abby. My TikTok is Abby K. Rocks. And like, what made you start doing music? I started doing music because I couldn't not do music. Yeah, it was like a process. Yes, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have music. And why the bass? How did that kind of thing? I actually started on guitar, and then it just so happened that I was going to my first rehearsal as a band, as a guitar player, and we got stuck in dead stop traffic, and they put me with the next band that already had a guitar player, but they didn't have a bass player. And I was like, what the hell is a bass? And they gave me the bass. And it was like an out-of-body experience. I just knew exactly what to do. And I never put it down. I love it. 
Thank you so much for your time. She's very popular. Every time she go live, she'll have 100, 200, 300 people watching. Yeah. People love you. And she go live every day, multiple times a day. She's showing you what she's wearing, what she's gonna be wearing, all type of stuff. <laughs> Interview this guy. Hello, sir, who are you? Hey, my, my name's Thomas DeChamps. Okay, and what do you do? What, are you a singer or player? I mean, guitar player, like what do you do? Yeah, I, I front a band and I play guitar. Um, I play some bass too, kind of jump around with some different bands. Nice, man, um, nice. But I've been working for Honky Tonk School for over four years now. Oh, nice, good, man. Came yeah. In, in, Right before COVID hit in 2019, auditioned yeah, to Okay, yeah, man. I, uh, will, 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 will. Amazing, man. Amazing, man. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, super thankful to be here. Uh, for four years with Honky Tonk School. Four, four years with Honky Tonk School, yeah. I've gotten to play hundreds of shifts, gotten thousands of hours on stage. Wow. Um, so it's it's a blessing. That's I, I amazing. Really, really, really love it here. That's amazing, man. Thank Oh, I'm sorry. I started playing drums when I was about five or six. Um, my brother played guitar. I was always a drummer. Uh, and then in high school, I guess I just kind of picked up guitar because I thought it was thought it'd be fun. And it really changed my life. It led me to, I mean, like pretty much all my best friends are musicians now. Um, and yeah, I just I kept it up and I love it. Thank you, sir. You're amazing, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. And you, man. Do every time I see you, man. Uh, I, this is what I notice. You always excited. You always happy. Yeah. And you, and you like so big. Like if somebody's on stage performing. You banging your head. You shooting them on. Like, <laughs> if you get one guy with long hair just breaking his back in the front, you know, it signals to everybody else, oh, we can have fun tonight. Okay, let's move closer to the stage and, you know, let's throw some shapes. And That's good. Tell our lungs are bleeding. <laughs> so, not only you yourself, you're amazing. I, I watch you, you're amazing, but you also like shield everybody else. That's amazing. You know, some people, some people, they're amazing, but they cocky, like, oh, that guy sucks, I'm better. But you, you support other people, like, you really into it. I, lo I love that about you. I love that about you. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm nothing, and so is everybody else. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta, I, I've, I've been so happy with how they treat new musicians that are just uh, looking to find a foot in the door in Nashville. And, uh, you know, you would think there would be some sort of ego trip where, oh, I'm already at the top. I don't need to talk to all the lowers, the, the lower class folks. But, Music and you just build people up. That's, that's cool, man. That's the universal language. I could go on it. Hey, hey, step back. Show people your outfit, man. What you got? What type of jacket you got on? What is this? You got black Sabbath. You got. That's pretty cool, man. You got Led Zeppelin. That is dope. That is the police. That is. That is yo. That is sick. <laughs> Where, where, where you get that from? That is sick. Well, um, Did you customize it? The denim I got from a, uh, from a pawn shop. And then uh, all the patches I got from uh, eBay or at shows and whatnot. That is hard, man. I love it, man. Half of these bands were out of bed and tired, but I tried to see as, as many of them as possible. That is so cool, man. Thank you so much, Thank Will. So much. And where can people find you, man? What's your um, media? Willie Wayne 2112. Willie spelled with a Y and 2112 as in Nerd Rock. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to make some music. Y'all ready? Hey, for those of you who's playing today, make sure your instruments are... Can y'all hear me? Make sure y'all's instruments are in tune. Yes, I'll be like tomorrow night for Hippies Hello. and Cowboys. Hello. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? For those of you who are playing instruments, make sure they're all in tune, okay? And uh, give these guys some respect, you know, listen to the music, that's what we're doing. Make sure you keep the volume down, please, because we want to hear, you know, we want to make music today, right? That's what we do. All right. What's your name? Kenna. Kenna? That's, where are you from, Kenna? Southern Indiana. She's from Southern Indiana. She's 20 years old. Jared. Jared, where are you from? Texas. Where? Texas. Texas. Jared from Texas. How old are you? 25. 25. This one? Ranch of Cucamonca. 
He's from Rancho Cucamonga, California. He's 62 years old. He's been he's been playing he's been playing with all these big heavy metal rock bands and comp, you know all this stuff. Striper, you ever heard of Striper? Right? He toured with them. That's what he does. What's your name? Sage Smith. I like your last name, Smith. That's a good name. Eastern Oregon. How old are you? 19 years old. Okay. This is a hook up and hit it band right here. Hook up and hit it. What up, sunken grave? Yeah. 
That's correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Man, last night was so fun. <laughs> Tell everybody your um, your name, your social media, where they can find you. Yeah, my name is Kenna L. Bruce. Uh, you can find me on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, iTunes, at Kenna L. Bruce Music. What is it? At Kenna? Kenna L. Bruce Music. Kenna L. Bruce Music. Okay, I can't remember this. helper, but take off the H at the S. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So I got all my phones, I'm using all my phones. I can't look it up. If anybody got the link, drop the link, please. Maria is here, hello Maria. Very good to see you. What up Sonia, are you late? No, I'm gonna be here for a while. I think it's gonna go until 2 p.m. So you're not late. There's a lot to. Uh, there's a lot of people here. We are. We're actually on our second singer. 
ลาที่สวยเห็นโอ้ thank you Elizabeth you got it Wendy you mind you mind sharing it No, I got I got stuff to do. Oh, uh, Kim, I know you you would like me to do that. Kim said we can't stay all day. All right, uh, Kane, L4 Music. Thank you, Meg. Yes, s u n k e n g r e v Thank you. That's it. What about the drummer? Are you guys singing about the drummer? Come on, sir. He's okay. So, a l if he's just tuning in, this is not a full band, guys. Everybody is basically showing up, showing the Bob Scott what they got. Everybody is looking for a job. And sadly, you heard what Scott said. He had to uh, fire two people uh, last week. I don't know who they are. Don't ask me. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it's not nobody we know. <laughs> Finger quotes. <laughs> Let me let me check on hippies and cowboys. I know they're always late. <laughs> But uh, he had to let two bands go. Jamie says nobody business. Uh, what, what what do you mean? What are you talking about? Uh, but yeah, I hope it's nobody like. <laughs> I hope it's not none of our people. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, people are normally cold. Bro. 
What up? Uh, what, are they looking for a single? What are they doing? Is that a single up there? Check, check. Check, one, two, three. Check, check. I like I like that kid owners. You like he he like on on the on the sideline. He will like chill for other people. Check, check. <laughs> I'm Christian, I'm from Miami, Florida. My name is Jerome Guzman, I'm from Connecticut. So it's hard to get everybody on TikTok because it's on push with mode. Okay. What is it? About 30 beats done dirty. I need to stop coming in with food. Okay. Okay.
Scott's like, get away from the mic, you know, be free, move around. Any talking about love? Anything from the rock era? What's the original key? Is it like a fire? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, anything from the rock era, I know. for tuning in this morning thank you guys uh again shout out to keton school every saturday uh two to five they do open mic additions at tootsies here downtown broadway if you need a music studio on keton school have a music studio you can use if you want to know the price all that information contact on keton school that org. Thank y'all for coming uh, out. How are we doing? On social media. Yeah. Yeah. You feel high voltage? Yeah. I want to see you put on a hell of a show. I want to see you put on a hell of a show. Tell them the band's song. 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 Uh, it's a lot colder in Minnesota. <laughs> he's 22 years old, he's single, disease-free, and living for a wife. <laughs> I still don't have a tan yet, I look like a ghostly vampire, but I suppose that helps the rock star aesthetic, right? He's looking for somebody that has a shirt. Anybody got a shirt? <laughs> look at the chest hair on that boy. Alright. Give it up for these musicians here, man. They've never played this next song before. They're going to rock this song. I can feel it. I can feel it. I got all the faith in the world with you. And that means a lot coming from Scott. If you believe in you, good news. <laughs> good news. How are the girls feeling out there? <laughs> oh, he's time to feel himself. <laughs>
Scott is happy. That's putting on that's putting on a show right there, right? That's what you do. You put on a show. Give it up for Willie. Okay, so you have a band, right? Your your whole band's here and your whole band's here. Go ahead and bring your band up. Get your band. That's you? Okay, come on up. Where's your bass player at? Oh, he was up too. Okay. Come on back up. So this is your band, and I'm gonna bring your band up next. Y'all meet each other. We need each other. <laughs> Willie has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can set it up. We're gonna get to everybody today. Even if we gotta stay till seven o'clock tonight. No, wait a minute. I play. I play at six. What's the name of your band? Pebbles. Just Pebble. This is the Pebble Band. Hey Morgan? Just Pebble. This is the Pebble Band. Pebble. Just Pebble. Like Pebbles and Bam Bam. It's not quite rock. Pebble. I like Pebbles. <laughs> I love it. What kind of bass is that? I can't see. A fender? Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Good. That's what you need. Check one, two, one, two, check it in, check one, two.
Thank you very much. Salud, Sancha are the synonyms for cheers. That's kind of music I love, but I would like to hear you guys sing more harmony. Like whenever you come in and sing in harmony. It don't matter if you're off key or not. That's, I yeah, sing yeah. Harmony on the ship. Uh, yeah. You know, what song are you going to play now? Um, you guys are
Appreciate you. You see that guy standing in the corner right there? Hey, Joe, wave to everybody. Joe, wave to everybody. That's Joe. He is the general manager of the world famous Kid Rock's big ass honky tonk. He's the captain of the ship down here. All right, I need that next band up, and I need to talk to you while they're setting up. Give these boys a round of applause. Okay? Where's all the happy people at? Happy people are. I'm happy, dude. I'm happy today. I love it. All right, where's the next band? Next band, next band, next band. I need all the hair on stage I can get. I need some hair on stage. <laughs> Oh, Scott having a meeting. I spend most every night 
afraid I close my eyes and sometimes see you in the shadows of oh, this smoke filled room. No telling how many tears I've sat and cried. acoustic shifts for a year. You hear how smooth his voice is? Like that, it's smooth. And then you formed this band, right? Or they picked you. You guys formed it. See, it works. That's how we do things. Hang on a second, dude. That's how we do things. We put them on acoustic shifts, let them learn the songs, and then they, yeah, play me another one. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you all. All right, this one is for the late, great Toby Keith. Here, put your mic stand down. Yeah.
player. Guitar player, Tom. Drummer, Tom. Where's the other bass player at? Bass player, Tom, you play bass. <laughs> Hey, Sarah. Oh, you
That guy did good over there in the guitar. I don't think the singer know the song. I think that's the problem. Play a song that he knows. Play a song that he knows. Okay. What song? Any other song? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, Uncle Tom.
Well, I don't have to get out. expensive down here, I don't blame him. <laughs> Look at Scott. <laughs> Look at Scott official expression. <laughs> And that's why I park for guys, I don't have that problem. The most I'm gonna pay is twenty dollars. On the daytime it's like a twenty dollars limit. No 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 matter how long you park. Yeah, I, I Before six o'clock. I guess I have to go up there and play bass and save the day, huh? What I'm Mrs. Purse, so every Saturday they have open mic audition where you come in audition and if it's Scott Collier, if he likes you, which you know everybody here that's the person he likes, they come here and then uh, basically to keep auditioning to show him what he got. And uh, Scott is the man that hire people for toots, hire bands for tootsies. Well, his boss, our boss, Uncle John, but. You know, Scott is the person that, you know, hey, this person is good, we should hire him. Um, for Tootsies, Kid Wack Ball, Rippies, Uncle Tonk Central. Uh, I, he also the one that does the scheduling for the week. Uh, so this is the main you need to be. Yeah, so, uh, so everybody here, they already audition and uh, they just come in here to network and uh, Eventually get a job. I've seen people get a job. There's always people that already got jobs. You know. I think last week a band got hired on, etc. So yeah, every Saturday they come out soon, guys, you know. Nathan just said everything. Nathan, Nathan just put everything I said in a simple right, <laughs> message. Yes, those are the future stores of tomorrow. What up, Super? Good to see you, buddy. Thank you, Cheryl. Good to see you guys. Uh, yes, tell him to put the schedule. I thought they already did. I thought Onkiton School already post uh, the schedule. Man, my fucking battery expired. Can we, uh, it's my okay? We all better be awake now. It's the popular one, but I'm awake after girls, girls, girls. That one woke me up. I don't know about y'all, so I expect you guys to sing along. Woo! Where are you from 
I'm from North Kakalaki, North Carolina. My name is Betty Rose from North Carolina and I moved here two weeks ago now. Two weeks. Woo! We found a job this week, so this is it's going well. All right, we're doing hit me with your best shot. What should I follow? I'll be killing base. Abigail goes live 20 times a day. Make sure y'all follow her. Yeah, oh, I got something. Wait. <laughs> Abby, yeah. where'd you get those cool shoes at? You sure you didn't see it? Yeah, because I'm only five foot one and three quarters. But now I'm like a solid five foot two. The three quarters matters. It does. <laughs>
like that guy over there.
we'll have tomorrow night for the hitties and cowboys to come tomorrow night um, about 10 o'clock. And then on Thursday to Sunday, I'll be live again. Thursday, you can find me around 8 o'clock, 8 to 11, Thursday and Sunday. Friday, about 10 to uh, 10 to close. I might do five, six hours on Friday night. Saturday, most likely, I should be here all day. Uh, I got to do, do the open mic audition from 2 to 5, well, what, 3 to 5. And then uh, I might just stay here all day like I did uh, last Saturday. Check, check. <laughs> I still be saying that you Dude, I'm so full. I just had a big, I just had a big hamburger. I'm so full. I'm so full. And again, shout out to Unkiton School. I'm live at Unkiton School right now on, on TikTok. A check, check. When I get out, get out, it's free. Time to go, money got the job. A lot, of people was, a lot of people was here this morning, man. Thank you guys for, uh... You have to come at 9 Friday. We have to send in Friday. Yeah, he plays 6 to 10. I, yeah, I always come around that time. What I say, 10 o'clock? Yeah, on Friday, I always come around 8 o'clock, actually. Or even 9. Yeah, I always see then on Fridays. But I don't think he planned. I think he. Uh, I think he's opening up for kid work. I, I thought. I thought he said that was his last show last night. I don't know. We'll see. I said ten. Yeah, I normally come to bed early on Friday nights and Saturdays. Yeah, Fridays and Saturdays, I always come early because I always go see Krista. Because she plays 6 to 10. So I always catch her on Friday. Before. Make sure you follow Krista Dudley everywhere. She's amazing. That's my friend. She actually helped me a lot throughout the, uh, throughout the years. Start a band. That's what they do here. Everybody getting everybody a phone number, and um, yeah. it's a good way to network. Like, if you're looking for a drummer, so, yeah, I'm still live.
favor? Can everybody put the chairs up on the tables, please? Hi, guys, I gotta go. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And I gotta go to Scott real quick. <laughs>